Over the last 24 hours, we have identified 387 new cases of COVID-19 and completed about 4,000 tests. Our positivity rate currently stands at 9.9%. There are now 565 people in hospital being treated for COVID-19, including 158 in the ICU. Sadly, I must announce that nine new deaths in people between the ages of 42 to 84 were reported to Alberta Health over the last 24 hours. My deepest sympathies go to the family, friends, and other loved ones of those mourning the loss of these individuals and anyone who has lost a loved one to any cause over the last few months. It has now been three weeks since our latest health measures were announced, and I know that they have impacted all of us. Yet the numbers show that our collective efforts are making a difference. The reproductive rate in Alberta, or the R value, over the last week was 0.67. This includes 0.62 in Calgary zone and 0.71 in the Edmonton zone. We have seen a steady decline in new cases across the province, which is helping bring our active case count down as well. In fact, active cases have declined 52% from their peak earlier this month. We are now seeing promising declines in hospitalization numbers, and although it has rebounded a little bit in the last few days, we have started seeing our positivity rate decline as well. It's important to remember that a lot of the stampede events are outdoor events, so that uh, particular context does mitigate the risk of transmission in, in that outdoor context. Uh, but of course, the things that would need to be removed would be restrictions that are currently pl in place with respect to social gatherings, the restrictions currently in place with respect to audiences. Uh, and again, those kinds of restrictions, we will be able to contemplate easing them if we can collectively bring that transmission risk down and our immunization protection up, uh, then those are the kinds of things that we would be able to contemplate easing, not just for the Calgary Stampede, but for other events this summer, as long as we do this work together over the next month to be able to maintain that pressure on downward transmission and upward vaccines. What we've seen in the last couple of weeks is the combined impact of public health measures that reduce person-to-person -person transmission and opportunities for contact, as well as an acceleration of our immunization program with increased volumes of vaccines coming in. And so uh, you may recall our decline in cases and hospitalizations when we uh, moved past the peak of our second wave in January. Uh, was a lot slower than what we're seeing right now. So the important thing to be able to reach that particular milestone of having a summer where we can have events uh, like the Calgary Stampede, the important thing is that we don't ease off our collective efforts too soon. And if over the next several weeks, we continue the very strong effort that we have collectively been working on to bring our cases down, to bring transmission down, and subsequently the hospitalization in ICU, as well as continuing to uh, ensure that our immunization program is reaching as many people as possible as quickly as possible. With those two things combined, that will make all the difference in terms of being able to ease measures in a faster way than we've been able to before. Uh, because with lower transmission plus higher vaccines, that combination is the, uh, the path that we have, the opportunity that we have to move to the other side of the most intense period of this pandemic. I'm grateful to the uh, Blackfleet Nation for offering vaccines to those from Alberta. Um, the conversations about setting that up and then the changes that were made were really all made at a national level. So uh, we weren't involved in those conversations. That really was a federal decision about border management. Um, what I would encourage Albertans, certainly if there's anyone who hasn't received a first dose, we have appointments available, so they wouldn't need to travel for that. And of course, if people are keen to get their second dose sooner, and, and some may have been traveling down to get their second dose, again, we anticipate having more information soon about when second doses will start to be booked. And the considerations of essential, non-essential, those, those 
specific questions. Again, I was not involved in those discussions and that really was a, a federal decision. Uh, of course, I would believe that COVID-19 vaccines are life-saving and critical. Uh, but again, I'm not sure what all of the tests are that the Public Health Agency of Canada uses in terms of determining the availability within or outside of the country as they, as they apply those tests. Uh, so that may or may not be something that they've considered. But of course, it is critical that as many Albertans as possible choose to protect themselves and their communities by receiving vaccine. Um, and again, those technicalities and details of, of how the Public Health Agency of Canada assessed that, I wouldn't be able to comment on.